Well, obviously you can tell I'm holding a Bible in my hand, the Bible. The book that people will say, uh, you can't believe it, it's full of mistakes. Uh, the book that people will say, yeah, you know, every home should have a Bible. A book that people will say, I picked up this book and my life was transformed. Well, I come from the camp of, I picked up this book and my life was transformed. I wanna ask you this question. Um, when we look around at our country, we have a nation that was founded upon uh, certain documents that promised or at least provided for us liberty and freedom. Now we look at a nation today that's not free and we're losing our liberties. But no matter what country you might live in under whatever government, this book introduces you to the God of all freedom and the God of all liberty, which is amazing to me because this is not a political book. In fact, the great political tyrannical regimes of the world are deathly afraid of this book. You wanna know why? Why would this book be banned in so many countries? Because it sets people free. Let's dive into it and find out why. I'm gonna tell you straight up, these verses are personal to me. These are my go-to verses. When I need them, they're there. And I'm gonna, I want you to have them. These are my trans verses. Get that, transverse? Trans, transverse, transverses, trans formation. Here it comes. Ephesians 2.10. For we are his workmanship. The Greek word is poem. We are his poem. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. Righteousness. Which God prepared before him that we should walk in them. Is that awesome? Amen. How cool is that? The tennis shoes I'm wearing, somebody made them. I didn't know the guy. I, 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 don't, I, I, didn't, I don't even know where they made them. I just got them and put my foot in them. And my feet could say, these shoes were made before you knew it. This is true. God says, I made you before you knew you. And I gave you a life to live that's waiting for you. Why don't you unwrap it? And I love the fact that God uses the word poem, poema in Greek. I am the songwriter. I am the poet. And you, you're the one I'm working on. But he'll never knock down the door to get that work done. You got to open the door. You have to invite him in. Ezekiel 36, 27. This is awesome. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. <laughs> and you will keep my judgments and do them. Man, I love that. Look at just the way that he talks. There's just no baloney with this. I hear it like this because this is the way, this is how he speaks to me. Jack, listen up. I will put my spirit within you. I'm doing that. And I'm going to cause you to walk in my statutes. They're my statutes. I'm going to cause you to walk in them. And I will keep, or you will keep my judgments. I'm going to give you the ability to do that, Jack. And you'll do them. Amen. I can't do those things. But because he's working from the inside out, relationship versus religion, he does it. I remind him of this all the time. <laughs> this is incurred. Listen, I'm so happily enslaved to his freedom. Ezekiel 37, 14. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live. Wow. Isaiah 1, 18. This is awesome. Love it. God says, come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And all of that's beautiful, but you know what word I love the most is the word reason. Come, let us reason. The word in Hebrew means, come, let's, uh, let's go at it, you and I, together. God is saying, you want to argue? Come up here. Let's go. Isn't that, isn't that just like him to say to, to us? So you think you're something, huh? Why don't you bring your big guns up here? And state your biggest argument, Jack. Let it rip. And that verse implies that you're going to lose. And the greatest thing you can do is to lose 
your fight with God. Stop. Well, we'll hook up. Stop. By the way, please read your Bible more. You'll have less questions to trouble you. It's really true. But God says, you want a reason? You want, you want to fight about it? Just know this. I know how to handle sin. I, I wash it away in the blood of my son. 2 Corinthians 5, 20 and 21. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. I implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Here it comes. For he, that is God, made him, that's Jesus, who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness, get the word, righteousness of God in him. That's awesome. The righteousness of God at work. I'm going to read this to you. It's a note to myself, but if it blesses you, then so be it. Slaves must do the bidding of their master. If their master is sex, drugs, and rock and roll, money, pride, power, manipulation, greed, lust, anger, violence, hatred, brutality, perversion, then you will easily be able to tell who the master is if that's going on in your life. The remarkable thing is that your master or my master isn't some remote outside uh, outside of us dressed up in a cloak or some fancy Armani suit. When we look in the mirror, we are looking at the representation of the master we serve. So Paul's challenge to us comes down to what, how, what kind of a life are you living? And if you're saying today, I'm living a life, I mean, I'm, but I don't know if it's worth having. <laughs> And God would say to you today, I'll give you a life of value. Yes, he's holy, and yes, he's pure, and yes, he cannot have sin in his presence, but he's also the God that says, you come to me, and I'll wash you clean. I just, he's amazing. When you see a frustrated little kid, he's, he doesn't know what he wants. He's filthy, dirty, he's been climbing around in the backyard, he's stubbed him. No, toes or something, his snot's running down his nose, his hair's whacked out, right? He's just a mess, and he's also hungry and tired at the same. He's just a mess. And you, and you see a mom or a dad just deal with it right then and there. They, they just get the towel out, they're washing or hosing down his face and cleaning him up <laughs> and getting him all ready for bed or whatever it is. Don't you see us like that with God? He can handle it. Servitude of sin leads to prison. Uh, I mean, it could lead to physical prison, but that's not the prison I'm talking about. The prison of being stuck with yourself and nobody else. Stuck with you. I'm, it's not, I'm not talking about being lonely. I'm talking about being in a crowded room, but you are alone with you because you've never let him in because you have these shrines set up of sin, and he wants to break those things down. Notice in the Old Testament, how many times in the Old Testament do you see God telling a king of Israel, go and tear down those high places? You ever read about those, the high places? The Bible's being very nice to you when it uses the word high places. They're very, that word high places is a very pornographic word. Go and tear down those centers where people gather and do all kinds of perversity, God says the land is cursed so long as this is happening. Go clean that up. And so Josiah does that, or David does that. But also servitude to Christ is that incredible forever freedom. When he says what to do, I... I I know it sounds like when he says in the Bible what to do, it sounds like he's telling us. I, I've now surrendered that too to God. I've, I've learned to just stop fighting and I, I don't hear God telling me anything. I hear God saying things to me. Because you know, I'm gonna tell you this and it's kind of like there's some resistance there. So my prayer is, Lord, I don't wanna resist you in any way. If there's anything in my life that's resistant, take it out. That you might be able to speak to me and I'll follow you. 
Einstein said uh, in his latter years of life that he actually discovered that he hardly knew anything. Einstein. I would like to know what he thought he didn't know. <laughs> but isn't that true as a believer? The further along we get, it's kind of like, you know, uh, that's okay, God. You, you take the wheel. I'm talking about Jeremiah 29. You know this verse, 11 and 12. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and pray to me, and I will listen to you. The next thing that we have right here real quick is verses 17 and 18, and that is his grace commands us as his children. I won't belabor this. His grace commands us. It's beautiful. As his children. He says in verse 17, but God be thanks that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form, cast, mold, um, die, of doctrine. In other words, Bible doctrine was poured into your life and it filled you up. Bible doctrine was poured into you, went in through the ears and the heart of your life and Bible. You were filled with, like a gas tank is filled with gasoline, you were filled with bible <laughs> Right? bible And you were filled up. That's what he's referring to. Your body took in the Bible, the form, the scriptures, the doctrines were poured into you. And your skin on the outside, but your Bible on the inside, when you bleed, it's Bible. To which you were delivered, verse 18, and having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Hallelujah to that. Yes, I want to be under the command of God's grace. Hallelujah to that. It's absolutely awesome. Galatians 4, verse 19 says, my little children for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you. God's grace commands you. So listen, it's not God's grace given to me that I might go sin up a storm. It's God's grace whereby some temptation knocks on my door and I can say, get off my property. Get out of here. Whatever it might be. You know those routine things? Maybe in your life there's this stuff that you've just, you've just decided this is just the way it is until I die. This sin is going to be a part of my life. It's a dark spot on my soul. I want you to know today You invite Jesus Christ in on this because he is your master and you are his slave and none of his kids have to put up with that. All we need to do is cry out to him. And listen, when you do, he's going to say to you, okay, this is what we're going to do from here on out. He'll lead you and guide you. Listen to what Jesus said. This is strong. You guys okay? John 8, 34 says, and Jesus answered them and said, most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. Let me help some of you out before you panic. He who, whoever commits sin, the word is just plans on sinning. It's just, you're looking at your watch right now saying, when's he done? I got a, I got a thing I got to go do. I got a, I got some sinning to do. The guy's already taken an hour of my sin time. Jesus says, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. See? I love that. A son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. You want to be a child of God? Yeah, then become, listen, become one who's under his command. And then, third and finally, it's this, verse 19. His grace shapes us into his instruments. Verse 19 tells us, I speak in human terms because of your wokeness, or it should be weakness, but the, <laughs> it's probably the same meaning. Um, if you're uh, of your flesh, for just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and, and of lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. Present your body to God. We had, no, we had no problem presenting our body, our members. That's the word members. The, the word in the Greek actually means parts. So what parts? All parts. <laughs> Public parts and private parts. Parts are God's 
parts. If you're a believer, your parts belong to God. What parts? Public parts and private parts. They all belong to God. Are you a Christian? Yes, I am. Then your public and private parts belong to God. So wait a minute, can he have my public parts and I have my private parts? No, he's your master. So if you haven't decided to stop coming to the church yet, you, you will in about, in about three seconds here. This, this implies very strongly that we cannot have a life of sin determining that as a Christian, I will keep this even though he has said no, that you're going to do it anyway. Hang on. The dangerous, horrific truth is that when he starts giving you over to that thing, you hear him less. You can't. He used to say to you, stop this. Then it's, listen, stop this. But it's, it's not that he's changing his tone. It's just that he's changing the volume. It's not even him changing the volume. It's what the Bible says where our ears have become thick or callous. He's still speaking the same volume, but we don't hear him as much because we've calloused our hearts against that thing so that when he says, don't do this, I want you to be free, we have shut him out. Christians do this. And it's, it's my prayer as your pastor to, that to ruin your life today in this area, <laughs> that you as a believer, that you wind up finding out what it's really like to be absolutely an instrument of his grace and take the shape of God's grace in this world. We live in an amazing moment of time. I say this every week now, but it gets more amazing every week. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 6, almost done. 1 John 1, 6 says, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commands is a liar and the truth is not in him. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed, his, God's seed, born again experience remains in him. And he cannot sin because he has been born of God. That means you can't practice sin. Do we sin? Yes. Do we want to? No. Today I, I, I say I'm a Christ follower of Jesus. I want to follow him. Paul, Paul would say, I, I wrote a book on this. And it would mean this, that we're being shaped sculpted, carved, crafted, fashioned. The word is translated chipped. I like that. Chipped away. Have you ever seen a sculptor chipping away? Have you ever seen, I don't know if you've ever been to Italy and uh, Tuscany and you've seen David. Every, you stand in line for hours to see Michelangelo's David. And it's, you're standing there and it's supposed to be the most anatomically perfect human being ever carved. And he just... It took him years, and he just chipped, chip, 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 chip. The Holy Spirit's doing that to you and I. Chip, 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 chip. What are we supposed to do? Stand still. <laughs> Let him do it. Final word, and I mean it. <laughs> I have this equation that works for me, and maybe it'll work for you, and it's this. The correlation between me desiring to be used by God is in direct proportion to the magnitude of my yieldedness to be controlled by God. And the outcome of this correlation is an action, and it's called discipleship. And so for me, this is it. It's on the screen, final verse. This is it. You can get a tattoo if you want on this. We should maybe spray paint this on your car. Galatians 2.20. You want to talk about an amazing statement? Seems like a bizarre contradiction, but it's talking about enslavement to his freedom. I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me.
So the question today for all of us is, have we been liberated? Have we been set free? You know, those issues of life that we are learning in the Bible, chips away at us, hammers away at us. Let's be honest, those things where in life they're difficult. We don't like them. But can I suggest this to you? And I think you'll get it in a second. The things that you and I have hated in life or despised in life or, or said, that's just too hard. Maybe it's, maybe it's your college exam or schooling or a marriage or a business venture or an idea, whatever it might be. And it's just so hard that if you just stick with it, that you wind up coming through it. And then you look back and you say, wow, not only did we make it or not only getting my diploma or getting this degree or getting this job worth it. But I'm so grateful for all of the hardships that brought me through this because without the hardships, I never would have been able to come to where I'm at today. What happened? Out of the situations, you were chiseled, you were made into the person that God wants you to be. In all of our difficulties, God's at work. Don't despair. God is working in my life. Look, I'm going through tough stuff. But I thank God for it because, listen, the Bible says that Jesus announces well, we're going to have tough times, but be of good cheer. So we'll get through this season and we'll get through this weather or we'll get through these finances. It's going to work. God's made you his promises. You can trust him, my friend. Listen, for more, you can go to jackhibbs.com and get more teachings, more studies, jackhibbs.com. Simple as that, you can find out so much more. God bless you and thank you so much for your prayers and your support. It keeps us going right here at Real Life. God bless you. Self-improvement, image management, positive affirmation. Around the world, there are endless resources to help you elevate your way of thinking and living. We want you to find real life in Christ. The book, Words of Warning by Charles Spurgeon is our free gift to you. Some books you seek serve temporary solutions, but what good are they if in the end you're the same or even lost? What we do in and for Christ is everlasting, leading to an exceedingly bright future. Order this book, Words of Warning, for free. Then in support of real life, Jack Hibbs recommends The One Year Bible, a perfect way to start out the new year. This best-selling Bible allows you to feast on Scripture daily in digestible bites, presented in an easy and enjoyable layout. For your gift of any amount, order the one-year Bible. And when you do, we will send you the book, The Real Christ. Understand Christ's love for the Father, His love for humanity, His humility, manliness, and compassion. Order now for a gift of any amount. Go to jackhibbs.com or call 877-777-2346. Welcome to Real Life Radio with Jack Hibbs. God's Word never will return void. God's Word is spirit, it's power, and it has its effects. So I want to encourage you to grab your Bibles, open them up, and get ready to learn from God's Word. God did not give us Bible prophecy to scare us, but to prepare us. But I think you're going to get a lot out of it, and one of the great reasons You are the light of the world, Jesus said. You are the salt of the earth. How does that happen? By the power of the Holy Spirit. You're gonna get excited about what Jesus Christ wants to do in and through you. Jack Hibbs truly believes we are living in some of the most exciting days in history which brings some great opportunities to share with the world a powerful, no-nonsense presentation of the gospel to this generation who are searching for answers and truth. Will you stand with us in sharing this message in real and practical ways? We ask that you commit to support Real Life and the teachings of Jack Hibbs with a gift of your choosing. Simply go to jackhibbs.com. 
And there, you can simply follow the instructions of how to give a one-time gift or a recurring gift. If you would prefer to call, our toll-free number is 877-777-2346. Again, that's 877-777-2346. And of course, you can write us. Our address is Real Life with Jack Hibbs, Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Your gift will be faithfully put to work because it's our desire that through Jesus Christ, you will know real life.